So tonight we have a special guest and then we just want to get right into it. Tony Buford, who is the CEO and founder of Organic Graffiti Cosmetics. And Tony, I see you're on mute. You can come off on mute, you know, share with us one word on your thoughts of tonight's documentary. Exposing, very exposing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so Tony, we want to get into what you're doing in your company. You know, you started Organic Graffiti Cosmetics. You know, you look fairly young and I'm assuming you are. Um, but what influenced you to actually start your company? Absolutely. Uh, that's a good question. So like many of us, just being unhappy in the workforce, um, wanting to know what my purpose was, I... Actually, I, I started to, you know, meditate and pray. What could I do on a larger scale to help children? Because initially I started out working as a teacher. Then I went from a teacher to working for DCFS. And then I worked as a social worker, then started hiring teachers. So I had all these jobs. And then midway in the master's program, I was miserable. I even, you know started to be combative with some of the professors because of some of the language that was being utilized. So then I had to, you know, meditate. What could I do to, you know, be able to help children on a larger scale? And then the light bulb just went off. Cosmetics. Um, I love makeup. And then I resonate with fashion. So here we are. And for those who don't know, definitely follow Tony. She is truly a fashionista, <laughs> I will say. But Tony, you know, you started a cosmetic company. You're thinking about children. You're thinking about impact in children. Why clean beauty? Like, what does that mean to you? And how did you come about to clean beauty? Absolutely. So to be completely transparent, um, I wanted to be distinguished from the rest. But then as I started to, you know, look up the different brands to see how could I distinguish my brand from the rest, things started to be exposed. I noticed that the FDA does not regulate what goes into products. So all those pretty packages that we see now today on the shelves, they're not being regulated. So I had to say to myself, okay, what could I do to, you know, build that transparency. And I started to look for organic ingredients and it took off from there. Now, did you ever think about, as you were you know, developing or formulating your products, did you ever really think about the true impact that it's actually having to one's health? Like we heard tonight. No, I had no idea because I was just like anyone else. I went for the packaging. I wanted to, you know, get what was popular, what all the other women and girls were wearing. You know, I wanted that, that, that it product, not even caring, you know, what is this doing to my skin until, you know, the light bulb went off for me too. Like, I need to start holding myself accountable, looking at the ingredients as well. And I was pleasantly, well, mortified as well, surprised, but pleasantly surprised that I could actually put a brand out there that had better ingredients to, you know, help the shelves because there are not many products out there today that you can find and you can trust because even with fragrances, what kind of fragrance? What's the percentage of fragrance? And then just like the video, Talc is in majority of our products today. All those high-end beauty brands that we're, we're, you know, seeing on the shelves, talc is one of the number one ingredients when you look, when you look at that. So kind of disturbing. Yeah, it, it truly is. And, you know, after being diagnosed with breast cancer, I pretty much got rid of everything. And I was like, all right, I need to find things to replace it with. But when I started looking at companies, I couldn't find anything that was suitable for Black women. And I was like, the struggle is real. And when I came across you, I was like, yes. And she has popping color. So this is wonderful. So of course, you know, I was, like I said, I was struggling with that. But um, to find you, I'm, I'm so excited that I found you. And for those who are watching, definitely check out Organic Cosmetic, um, Organic Graffiti Cosmetics. Um, Tony does have some really nice colors. But, you know, when we talk about clean beauty, um, you know, 
you have your product, you came out organic graffiti, you know, you started it because you had this desire, fashion, of course, I love the, you know, your packaging. And I was that girl, if the packaging was pretty, I would buy it. Like I was completely sold because it just looks nice just even sitting in my home. But how do you go about selecting your products, like your raw ingredients? How do you ensure that those chemicals are actually safe? Yeah. So starting out, what I wanted to do was just, you know, find a vendor. I wanted the easy way out. I, you know, I asked around uh, about vendors. Who could I use to, you know, start out with that I could just, you know, place my name on, you know, on the packaging and then start selling. But then I said, you know what, we're going to do the work. So I started out going to Whole Foods and started to select, you know, all the sort of certified organic ingredients. I was so excited. I got back home, started to, you know, put things together and it didn't work. <laughs> so I, I didn't realize that, okay, water solubles and oil solubles, uh, yeah, those don't mix. And synthetic ingredients and then organic ingredients are different. So about almost a year, it took me to make one lipstick. And then when I finally got it, like fireworks. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and then there's the color, right? We hear all these things about color and the additives and, you know, how do you really go about just making sure again, when you're sourcing your products, every little thing, every little detail, you have to really double check, triple check, because again, you want your consumer to have trust in you. And like we said, that transparency is so, so critical. So let's get into speaking of that. Let's talk about greenwashing. You know, nowadays there's so much greenwashing. Everybody has all these things on their labels. They have things like, you know, vegan or cruelty free or what is that? Like, what does that truly, truly mean when we talk, when we see those labels? What, do, what does that mean to us? You know what? You hit the nail on the head because we typically, we go down the makeup aisles and we see cruelty-free, vegan. That has nothing to do with ingredients. It just means that you don't test on animals. So in reality, how does that really help? I mean, yes, we, we do care about the animals too, but when we're looking at cosmetics, we want to you know, have products that resonate with us because individuals don't realize that whatever we're putting on our skin then transitions to the bloodstream. So being vegan or, you know, vegan friendly has nothing to do with what's going and what's being, you know, connected with the bloodstream at all for humans. So yeah, that's not being very transparent at all. It's actually kind of misleading when you think about it in a way, because, you know, of course, you know, you could be vegan in food intake, but not cosmetics. Absolutely. And, you know, even nowadays, the packaging looks so clean, right? It may have like the bamboo looks or what have you, it has like leaves on it because it, it sends that message that it's clean. But again, it's the greenwashing that we really need to be careful of. Now, we may have some individuals that are on the line and, you know, they're saying, I'm really considering making this change. I'm a little bit challenged making this change. You know, I've spent a gazillion dollars <laughs> on the makeup products I do have, or they're wanting to make the change. But this thing, these, you know, products can be so pricey. You know, when we think of healthy and we think of clean products, we think of costly. And, you know, especially in the Black community, we have beauty supply stores on every single corner. So when we think about this, like, how can we try to make a, make that step towards clean beauty or living a cleaner life or non-toxic or whatever words we choose to use, right? Because clean beauty is how we define it. Um, but how do we do that when things can be so pricey? Like, what, what do we look for? What can help us? Yeah. And if I weren't a marketer, <laughs> I wouldn't say organic graffiti. So yeah, mm. our price points definitely match the average consumer. I will say um, I made sure that I priced it out that it was affordable. Um, but going back to your question, 
Uh, metrics wise, there are 46% of women now that are demanding that transparency. They actually are looking for products that don't have the parabens, that don't have the talc, that don't have the sulfate. They are staying away from that. So what does that do? Supply and demand goes up. And when the supply and demand goes up, that means that the organic ingredients to make our products then go up as well. So unfortunately, there aren't a lot of alternatives. However, organic graffiti is there, so you can always start with us. We do have pretty reasonable prices. Absolutely. And again, Tony, thank you so much. I love Tony's products. Um, you guys go check her out, check out her website. Tony, before we wrap up tonight, I know we're getting close to our time. I just want to say, is there anything else that you would like to leave or share with our audience before we get into a little bit of Q&A? Yes. Um, I want to just say that keep in mind, uh, check the ingredients and let's all hold ourselves accountable because it's, it's, it, it's so easy to just kind of grab whatever you see on the shelves and being on the shelves, you may think that it's safe, but unfortunately it's not. And then also what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my email in the chat. So if you do have any, you know, questions that you want to ask us, feel free to send us an email and ask any questions. Um, I'll be happy to answer them. So I'll go ahead and add that in the chat. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tony. You know, of one, of, one of the things that's, you know, my heart's desire, and I've kind of made this verb on that we've talked about it and, and I've talked to Dr. today, but I really want to be able to educate the next generation on how to be a formulator because I don't want them to ever have to hear those dreadful words, it's cancer, right? If, again, when we think about that, you know, how can we continue to put the spotlight, especially for young black girls? I mean, white women have been talking about clean and healthy living and things of that nature and products for years. I mean, even when I was diagnosed, when Beauty Counter first came out, you know, I even considered, you know, being a, um, a salesperson for them or a beauty consultant. Sorry, I want to make sure I say the right words. But, you know, they didn't have products, you know, for Black women. And now they have come out with them, thank God. But it's like, how do we keep, you know, and, but it's, it's just too pricey, right? So how do we keep, you know, keep um, sowing these seeds into the next generation? But we do have a question. And so one of it is about mica. You know, what, can you tell us a little bit about mica and, you know, is there anything we need to be concerned about mica or what have you? Or is that something that's better than, um, you know, some of the other products that are out here or the other ingredients that are out here. And I'm going to, while you answer, I'm going to sip on my make me over mocktail. <laughs> For sure. So yeah, my thought is just a mineral. Um, it's a natural mineral that has a natural colorant. So it doesn't need an additive. Um, it's mined as a natural ingredient. So it's perfectly safe nothing synthetic because it's purely natural in that sense. Awesome. And another question came through, and this is about your products. You know, you mentioned on your, on your site um, about your products being 90% organic. Can you talk a little bit more about that? What does that mean? And what about that 10%? What does that look like? Yeah, so with the the wax that we use, um, a lot of wax companies, they don't really have organic wax. So with that being said, we typically, you know, we use a clean wax, but it's not organic. So we took that 10% way off. And there again, the transparency. So um, the wax is natural. It just isn't certified organic. That's the only difference. Awesome. Thank you. Any other questions from our audience? Does anyone have any questions for Tony? We have her here. I know she's a very busy woman. She's out in the, I call it the lab, <laughs> you know, making great products for us and trying to keep us healthy, not only for women, but also even, you know, young girls who are really into her products. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to share. Um, awesome. So we have what do you have for women who are of a certain age, 55 to 65, who need a little bit more due to skin elasticity and other problems as we age? 
So we don't have skincare products yet. I should speak that into existence. So currently right now, we just have lipsticks, we have eyeshadows, we have highlight, we have um, beauty blenders. But moving forward, we'll have um, foundation. So that's where that will come in. But looking at the website, we do have colors that are, you know, more... I would say natural for your everyday working woman that doesn't want that pop of color. For example, I'm wearing one of the lip glosses. Tia has on one of the lip glosses. There are a lot of natural colors for your eyes on there and your lips. So yeah, to piggyback on that, you can start with those natural colors until we add those skincare products or the foundation, so to speak. Awesome. Thank you. Now, shelf life, that's a big one. You know, oftentimes we find ourselves holding on to product, keeping them for a long time, you know, especially for those who don't use makeup every single day. And, you know, when we think about it over the past two years during the pandemic, a lot of us were at home without makeup on. So can you tell us a little bit about the shelf life just in general when it comes to these, you know, safe or clean beauty products? What does that look like? Yeah, so for any lipstick or eyeshadow, even though it is organic, I have a rule after one year, toss it. I, I, I know we like to hold on to our, you know, our favorites and we don't typically use it every day, but after one year, please toss it. For other products like mascara and things like that, which we don't carry, I know for mascara after two months or maybe a month or so, toss it. You know, it sounds like a short period of time, but bacteria starts to build up on mascara after a month's use. So you want to make sure that you're getting your wear out of it. And if not, go ahead and toss it. Hence the reason why it can seem to be more expensive, but thank you, Tony, for yes. making your prices affordable for us. What other questions? Uh, we have looking forward to clean products for eye puffiness and discoloration. Absolutely. Anyone else have any other questions? We'll give you another second or so just in case you're in the middle of typing. <laughs> I need new makeup. <laughs> yes. yes. Totally understood. Understand. Well, uh, everyone's saying me too. We're chiming in. Can you remind us of what the ingredients are? If you want to just kind of mention some of the things that we should look for in, in clean beauty. Yeah. So all the ingredients are listed underneath all the products and you click on ingredients on the website and 90% um, of them are certified organic. Right. So all of them. Yeah. <laughs> So la one last question, what would you say is the most dangerous product found in makeup? Ooh, that's a good one. I would say paraben. Um, yeah, I would say paraben for sure. And of yeah. course, we all, the, uh, mm -hmm. the big F, right? Fragrance. Fragrance, that's yeah, cute. because you don't know what fragrance or what's behind it because they don't have to regulate what's going behind the fragrance. So I agree with that too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, Tony, I just want to say thank you so much for spending this time. Uh, someone yes. else dies. Yes. <laughs> yes. There's so many, right? You can't just. Yes. There's one, a right? plethora of them. We can go <laughs> on and on. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, one thing I will say is to learn a little bit more about the dangers of the, the ingredients that are in our products, go to safecosmetics.com. Com, I believe is it safecosmetics.com or safe safecosmetics.org. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, be sure to use the Clearia app. We also have the Detox Me app that's out there. You have the Think Dirty app. You have uh, EWG has an app as well. You know, go to these apps and really start to learn about what's in your product. What's in your cabinet? What's in your products, right? We really want to thank you for posting the link in the chat, safecosmetics.org. You know, this is so important. This conversation is so important. It's much needed, especially in the Black community, because again, it's not something we've been talking about. And unfortunately, you know, beauty is big in our community. We are nine times, we spend nine times more than, you know, all other consumers. So definitely for those who are on here, share this information, share, feel free to share Tony's information. Again, thank you for coming out tonight, Tony. 
Um, Dr. Dede, I don't know if you have anything. I know she, I think she had to make a harder stop, so I'm not sure if she's still with us. But one other thing I wanted to share with everyone is we are going to continue this conversation. We're watching the entire series based on your feedback. We thank you so much for giving us feedback. We're able to, and thank you to HBO for, and the producers of the show for helping to break down barriers so we can get this information in the hands of those who do not have HBO. It's not about HBO. It's about the information that's being presented and getting this into our community to save our lives. Ladies, please share this with your sister circle. Tune in to us next week. We're going to do this every Monday um, for the next three episodes at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Uh, th again, this is in partnership with Bench to Community, and thank you so much again for coming out. Next week, we're going to have uh, Michelle Robinson. She is the founder of Demi Blue Natural Nails. So please come out. And, um, she's going to be our guest speaker next week. But next week is all about nail care. Many of us are getting uh, gel nails and tips and all of these things put on our hands. But it's funny when you go to the nail salon, who has on a mask and who does it, right? So definitely come out next uh, Monday, share, 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 share the information, share it on your page and post tonight. One thing that you learned about makeup and clean beauty, please share and please continue to educate the community. So important. Until then, we'll see you next Monday and everyone drink up you'll get a new recipe for next week so and thank you for you. having me <laughs> absolutely thank you so much bye night, have a good everyone. night take care